So Jesus huh? says only God is good. Okay, Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Listen carefully. So the rich young man, he runs up to Jesus. He gives him a title of honor. He says to him, good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus pounces on him for calling him good teacher and says, why do you call me good? There's no one good except for only God alone. And then Jesus goes into the preamble of advising him what to do by keeping the commandments. Um, and then the young man says, teacher, I have kept these commandments since I was a boy. What do we notice? In that response, the young man has dropped the title good, simply calls Jesus teacher, hence he has understood that only God is good alone. Very significant. So what we have there is a real, what you call powerhouse verse, which shows that the title of goodness has been deferred to God alone by Jesus exclusively. The young man has understood that in the context because in verse 20, he drops the title good and simply calls Jesus teacher. Hence he has understood that only God is good alone. I want you to just have a little back and forth. To deal with that? Yeah, I want you to do with Mark 10, 17. Okay, cool. So, uh, the common misconception with dealing with uh, Mark 10, 17 is, it seems like you're coming from the perspective that Jesus is denying to be good, right? And so you're saying Jesus denies being good and says that only God is good. In the grand scheme of things, yes. Not that he's not a good person, but in the grand scheme of things, whereas he's deferring that title to the almighty God. Yeah. Yes. So, so this is where we would disagree because, right, obviously here he, he doesn't say that he's not good. He doesn't deny being good. He doesn't say he's not good. He doesn't say, do not call me good. He just asks the question, why do you call me good? Only God is good, right? There's only one good and that's God alone. If Jesus is good, right, in the great scram the, you know, grand scheme of things, then Jesus is God. There's only God is morally perfect, right? As human beings, we all sin. Angels are even uh, imperfect. But there's only one who is perfect and that's God. So Jesus asking the young ruler the question, why do you call me good, is similar to his thought-provoking questions that he asks anyone that he's engaging with. And the man didn't understand what he was saying because what he's saying is it implies that Jesus is God and the man didn't understand what he was saying. So this is a common response Christians give. That's a rhetorical question that what, what the, Jesus wants to do is to make the young man reflect who he really is by your explanation. However, note something. He doesn't say, do you know why you call me good? That by necessity, by English grammar, that would then necessitate that then the question would be posed as to why, you know, why you're calling me good? Then your explanation would make semantic sense. However, the point remains by him deferring the title, exclusively giving that to God alone. Secondly, in regards to this rhetorical response you've made, when Jesus gives that young man the advice, he does not go away concluding, oh, now I get it, you're God Almighty. So the rhetorical nature of your response makes no sense whatsoever. So within the context, Notice something in verse 20. This is the verse that Christians need to reflect upon. In verse 20, he drops the title good and simply calls Jesus teacher. Hence, he's understood. Look, look what he's understood. That when I called him good teacher, Jesus pounced on me for calling him good teacher. And when he redresses Jesus, he simply calls him teacher in verse 20. Hence, he has understood. Now, a further substantiation. Are you going to... Yeah. Uh, can I, can I yeah. jump in here? Yeah, but let me just because you because I listen on to what you said in terms of rhetorical yeah, but you're, response. You're, you're saying a lot though. You gotta let me jump in at some point. Okay, go ahead. All right, I appreciate it. So, it's it's not simply just a uh, you're you're now turning into a grammatical problem, as if uh, it, it is. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're saying. As if Jesus saying, "Why do you call me good?" does not make sense grammatically in him asking the thought-provoking question. Whether he says, "Do you know why you call me good?" or whether he says. Why do you call me good? Both grammatically work with the question. It doesn't matter how, how he said it. No. Him saying, why do you call me good? It's still a thought provoking question. Now, for example. It's, it's, hold on, let me, let me continue. Because he then continues, as you, like you, you're talking about the context. He continues to go on and says, tells him to sell all his things and sell all his, all his possessions and come follow him for his eternal life. That there's one thing that he lacks and he has to follow Jesus for his eternal life. Notice how this is also an expression of Jesus showing that he is the one who is good and he is the one who is the way for his, his eternal life. If he's, if he's following all the commandments, he said he's kept all the commandments from the beginning, right? Love your, love your mother and father, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, yada, 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 right? But then he says, Jesus says, there's one thing that you lack. In all of the commandments, I wanna ask you this, let's talk. In all of the commandments that he was keeping, 
And Jesus says, there's one that he lacks. Sell your possessions, then come follow me. What is What commandment is that tied to? Yeah, so in essence, what he's saying within the preamble of Mark 10, 17, is that what he's actually telling him after rebuking him for calling him good. So let me just deal with that point a bit before I address this singular point that you've made. So within the context, you're saying that grammatically it doesn't make a, a difference, but it does because in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 19 of the same account, because Mark is the first gospel for everyone's attention. When Matthew reads the same account, Matthew rearranges the word because he's got such a problem sitting thinking, why is Jesus saying that only God is good alone? So he then says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, why do you ask me about what is good? So he changes the statement into a question about generically what is good. That's Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 19, which changes the context of what Mark is saying in Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Now, to substantiate your point, about come and follow me. Yes, because in all, because it's not just enough, because notice the question is, what must I do to get eternal life? So the eternal life is not just sufficient to keeping the commandments and doing good deeds. You have to go over and build, like you Christians have come over from the US. Why? Because you think that you want to get close to Jesus and therefore you want to do extra work to get to attain that eternal life where you'll be guaranteed. So Christ is saying in that context, come and follow me. Meaning what, what follow- What commandment is that tied to? So the commandment is simply tied to the fact that he says, Hear thou, O Israel, your Lord God, the Lord is one. Boom. Yeah. So if the commandment is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and you shall not, you know, worship any other gods, put nothing before me, no other idols, right? This man obviously had his possessions as his most adored thing above God. And so in order for him to obey that commandment correctly, he had to then go give it up for Jesus. No, no. No? What, what he had to, let me explain. What he had to do in this context, because the, the riches are an obstacle, but just imagine he's, he, I'll explain to you. Just imagine he's going around following Jesus. And what's that, what does that follow mean? It simply means going forth and spreading the message to Jesus amongst the Jews. Where does he say that? I'll explain to you. Because when he says follow me, what does that mean? Are, are you going to literally just walk behind Jesus at every juncture? No, it literally means follow me because of the task that I'm setting forth for the other people, the disciples to go forth, to proselytize to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Where does he say that? Well, within the, because they follow me. Okay, what does follow me ah, mean? we're in the context. Okay, what does follow me Beautiful. mean? Beautiful. It means, so when you follow Jesus, yes. you believe who he is. Yes. And you obey his word. Yes. You love him, you keep his commandments. Yeah. One of the commandments is to believe that he is the son of God yeah. who came down to give his life as a ransom for many. You that's follow Mark, Jesus in believing. Yeah, that's, that's Mark it, chapter 10 verse exactly. 45. We're but the point, Mark, yeah, but what I'm, yeah, but what I'm saying to you to negate that particular point, what is, the term son of God, are you Christian people here aware, which is the sad paradox of history, that the term son of God is defined in Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. It says the following. Defined? Yes, it says the following. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they too will be called the sons of God. So the term sons of God, ladies and gentlemen, is a ubiquitous title used for those who represent God. And we see this further alluded to other individuals, like in Luke 3.38, Adam is referred to as the son of God. Oh. We look at Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, um, Jacob is referred to as the son of God. And furthermore, of significant substantiation, no, I, no, because, you, because you're I, the one who... I, I like where this is going. Yeah, okay because you're the one who defines son of God. I'm just going to make it clear to everyone, to the Christian audience in particular, that what does son of God mean? So in John chapter 10, verse 33, Jesus says, is it not written in your scriptures that you, you might too... Snap this on you? Oh, yeah, go on. So in John chapter 10, verse 33, Jesus is just, does he say to those Jews, those obstinate Jews who are rejecting him, is it not written in your scriptures that you too are gods? So all it means, one who is referred to as a son of God is referred to as one who represents God. Now going back to the point of Mark Wait, 10, 17. Can I respond to it? Yeah, okay, go on. <laughs> I appreciate it. So, you're, now, so now you're trying to generalize sons of God, which then, if you acknowledge that God has sons in this sense, then you, what you have on your tent, three men, one message, you have just refuted that and, and now rejected that because according to Moses, according to two of those men, they have one message that God has sons in many senses. According to one of those men, God, Allah, doesn't have any sons. Has He's a father to no one in any sense. I hope you, yeah, you agree. Okay, good. So you agree with that. So then what you're saying shows that Moses and Jesus, as you're quoting the Bible over there, Deuteronomy and Mark, uh, ironically, both in Mark and in, in Deuteronomy, both two of those men on your tent disagree with the message of Muhammad. So you just threw Muhammad under the bus. No, let's not use that type of terminology. I'm not going to okay, warrant forgive, that. Okay, forgive me. Yeah. So you, you just refuted Muhammad. I'll say you refuted Muhammad and showing that it's not three men, one message. It's two men, one message against a man who's against their message. 
But talking about the sons, now you, you understand in Mark, for example, you are you familiar with the story of the vineyard? Jesus' parable of the vineyard, right? Okay. How and you and who's the vine, who's the owner of the vineyard in the in the parable? Yes. It's it's God, right? Yeah. And the one his servants that he sends are the prophets. And then finally it says, Then I will send my son who I love, they respect him. Who's the son in that? Yeah, so the son in this context is referred to again as Christ. But the term son in itself, but the term son in itself. Listen, listen, gentlemen, this is not why, a substantive. Can I finish? Yeah, You've asked me a why, question. Yeah, so. Well, I wanted to just, yeah. sorry, I wanted to substantiate this. Okay. Why, aren't, why did Jesus differentiate himself from the prophets by calling them the servants of the vineyard owner while he calls himself the beloved son who is the heir, in, the heir and inheritor of the vineyard? Yeah, so in terms of this t title, son, prophet of God, um, Messiah, these are all interchangeable titles. So hence, this is why you get other people who are referred to as sons of God. You've got other people who are referred to as messiahs. You've got other people who are referred to as saviors. So these are not titles just stick summarily to Jesus Christ. They're a ubiquitous title for those who represent God. Hence, you get these terms. Now, what he's saying makes no sense because in Hebrews, in chapter 1 of Hebrews, it makes mention that in terms of the angels, that Jesus was even higher than the angels. So it makes no sense within the context to say, if Jesus is higher than the angels, which God by default would be higher. So in this particular context, in reference to what you've said, if he's referring to him as a son, it's just one who represents wait, wait, God. Let me, what? Yeah, I'm just giving you that. No, no, so, how, how does Hebrews 1 about the angels relate to the parable of how the son is different from the prophets? How does that relate? Yeah, because what it says in Hebrews chapter 1 is essentially speaking that the angels God, God has made the angels, but Christ is even higher than the angels. Right. So it makes no sense within the context of the chapter that you would then say such a thing, which is already by, yes, which is already God's by default, that Christ would be higher than the angels, because that would already be given. Wait, wait, I, I don't understand the correlation. Yeah. How, how is Christ being higher than the angels, which you're right, he is. How is that correlating it to how Jesus separates himself from the prophets as the servants of God while he's the son of God? Yeah, because these, yeah, but these are still titles which are interchangeable. You can use either or title. Why does he make a distinction between himself? It's, between it's, him it's irrelevant because the term, listen, the term son of God literally means one who represents God. No, these, are, these are interchangeable. Okay, not, so explain to me why in Luke 3, 38, it's Adam, the son of God. But, so, okay, because he's the, first, he's the first human created by God. So he... So he okay. is in the sense that he's God's creation. Right? Excellent. Yes. So look, but that's the, your definition. Uh, well, in the no, in the Bible it gives you different different contexts in which God has a son, in which who's the son of God? Adam being God's creation. Uh, he's he's uh, you know. The, so the Jesus, one, Jesus is creation as well. well no, he's not one actually. close in chapter well, 15, well, verse 15. Well, he's not. He's, he's the not. firstborn of creation. Well, no, that, that means that he's above creation. That means preeminence. It no, says he's the firstborn no. of the dead too. Was, that, was he the first one to yeah, die? Yeah, no, that means okay, that... So, no, I'll explain wait, wait, that. No, 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 stop, stop, please. When you say that he's the firstborn, uh, the firstborn of creation, you keep reading, it says, because by him all things were created. In heaven, on earth, visible, invisible, thrones, dominions, principalities, rulers, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist, and he is the firstborn of the dead. So Exactly. Firstborn yeah, of the yeah, dead. That's right. the let me, let me yeah. So that his preeminence is shown above everything. Yes. So all of that firstborn is preeminence. It's not always the first little thing. Yeah, well so in the context of the verse that you've cited, when it says all things came through him. That by definition shows he's not the source. In 1 Corinthians, listen guys, in 1 what Corinthians, is, let, let me explain to you. In 1, and I'll define the first terms. Corinthians yes, 1 yeah. Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 6. Yeah. Paul says the following. Uh -huh. For unto us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things come, uh -huh. meaning the source. And one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things came, meaning he's the passive conduit. Okay. Well, let me explain, because I'm answering your question directly in correlation, because I'm giving a definition for the audience to understand as well. So when all things are, I'm not switching topics. What I'm trying to show to you, based upon the citation you made from 1 Colossians 15, that when it comes to this term, that all, yes, I quoted it, but then you substantiated it. So I'm giving you an understanding when you say, oh, all things are made through him. This must make him God Almighty. But no, because in, then I cited. I didn't say that, you said No, but you're the one who's citing that as evidence as well. In one, no, I didn't. You did. I never it, know, bro. You, okay, so you don't, okay, let me get it straight. So you don't believe one Colossians 15 no is citing one, Jesus as God. Well, you, not, do you believe not, that? It's not one Colossians, it's just Colossians. But yes, it does show that Jesus is creator along with the Father. <laughs> but, However, but hold on, you said that you I You just contradicted yourself no, there without even realizing. You, no, listen, Mustafa, you said that I brought this up as a point. I didn't bring this up. 
I only answered you because you went to Colossians yes. chapter one That's to right. try to say that Jesus is also created. Yes. Because it says he's the firstborn of all. Correct. Creation. Yes. I corrected you and gave you the context of, of Colossians one to show you how actually it shows that Jesus is God and creator of everything along with the Father. But it, but then then what happened then when he says all things were created by means of him and through him by definition the Greek word there is called dia. Now dia means by the means of. So God creates all the universe by the means of Jesus right. as the passive conduit. So, so now, hang on, let me finish. I, let me, let me finish. Let me mean, this way. Because one, no, no, I'm not preaching the gospel. Because, yeah, you are, you because this is this is what you call You're without you even realizing. There's a distinction between when something comes from something uh -huh. and something comes through I, something. I, uh, so hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know, but that's the tragedy of the matter here. So when well, it we'll comes, to, yeah, let me, let me substantiate. So when it comes, when something is from something, yeah. he is the source. Yeah. Okay. When something is through something, he uh -huh. is that conduit. Like Jesus says in um, uh, John chapter four, uh, 14, verse six, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man come through to the father, but by, by through me. So you have to get through, um, uh, through Jesus way, right? to yeah. God. Right. So what, is the relevant point. I don't want this to become, I want people to focus yeah. summarily. So when 1 Corinthians 8, verse 4 to 6, when it's from um, whom all things came, so even he distinguishes in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, that who is God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word kurios, in the, in the, in the verses before, Paul says, there are many gods and no, 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 I'm not, I know because what I'm trying to do, I want people to reflect because you made the point by substantiating in one closure 15 because all okay, things let, were made. Let, let's no, focus, let me, no, let me focus on one thing though. Okay? No. So you're, the one thing that, let, let's at least focus because you're like you're chopping up going. I'm not that. chopping, I'm just trying to substantiate okay, the point for I your understanding. You, but let's stay focused, okay? Because you, you have a lot that you want to say. Let's stay focused. Hmm. So let's deal with, um, let, let's deal with the creation part. Okay, you said that Colossians proves that Jesus is created. Okay, when it says that, He's the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created. By means right? of. Well, the yeah, Greek word there is dia, dia means by means so, of. Yeah, Not so, that he well, is no, the creator. By, by him and through and for. It says all of those things. Let me ask you this. Okay? By means of. Okay, okay. I got, but I got have you, you. Stop you, you there. No have you understood the difference I, there? I, I, listen, In the Greek, I'll, I'll the go, word is dia, go, which go, means by I'll the go means go of. You. Yeah, that yeah. means by. But by, <laughs> but by the so, means of that's that's a laugh. It's, that's your new. That's sad. You don't, don't understand basic what English you, grammar. What you're trying to do is you're trying to use the New World Translation because you like to hang, hinge on Jehovah's Witnesses. But I'm not hinging on Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, that's the arguments. Greek. Go to the BibleHub.net. It clearly states on there by means of the Greek I, I word you, we'll there is dia. Well, here's my but, so it's not here's by my, him. Here's my One second, let no, me finish. No, no. I'm going to ram this point home. We'll I'm gonna, just You're two seconds. Off, give me, I'll give you full three minutes to no, speak without interruption. No, I I, I'm going to say to you now, listen to this. It doesn't matter. We'll the gentleman said by him all so things were made. No, no, no. We're not going to get because he doesn't want you to hear what I'm saying. That's the question. You speak. I'll listen to one. So I don't need three minutes. I'm asking you a direct question. Yes. Because you're trying to run from me. I'm not running. So when you you admit that it says that that all things, the universe, right? The world. Because right. it says so icon. Of, it says ages. It, it says that it doesn't oh, say universe. So, in wait, the Greek, oh, so ages, in the Greek, in the, through what the, does ages mean? it means from the time, from Thank times so gone. Time but it doesn't say from the universe. Wait, wait, That's out, why you use out, the word out, universe. So, Jesus, so it's through Jesus that time was created, correct? No, not through Jesus. No. No, no. Hang on. Where are you going? Where are you walking away to? Oh, you. Oh my word! You don't even know what you're talking about. Oh my God! What we doing? Okay, All right, so you, you just said that ages means time, and you just said that by means through of the Jesus, ages, ages means in times, the past. It doesn't. Times, you're, but what you're trying to do is to try to show. He I, let's go with you. Yeah, yeah, go with me. By means of him, yes, all things were created. What are the all things? So that means the heaven, that, that's not the heavens and the earth. You know what this is that's about? Not the Hang on, let me, you know what this is about? It's not, no, this is, you're just clapping like a man. You know what, yeah, you know what this is about? This is about the new creation, the new heaven, the new, uh, the new dominions, the foundation, the foundations. This is not speaking about the heavens and the earth. This is the new um, creation, which is, is referred to. Yes, it's right, been right, referred to. Right, well, let, let me finish, okay, let me finish. Right, so what he said, people, you know, within the shouting, we can't really get then what is happening here. Yeah. So he said that Jesus, Jesus is um, the firstborn of creation, okay? This was your point. Now I said to you, he's the firstborn from the dead. How can God die? 
One, one um, Timothy Sh Sha no, I'm not changing no argument. I'm sub no, this is you because you know, because you know you are stuck big time. Okay, so this, when he refers to the first ball, according to James D.G. Dunn, a very eminent New Testament scholar, he's written a book called The, um, uh, Chris, the, the Evidence for Jesus. He states explicitly that um, this is in reference to the, uh, the, uh, the, the new creation in terms of when he ri rises again, the dominions and the, and, and the foundations. It's not speaking about the, he the creation of the heavens because in Mark's gospel, it says that God created the heavens and the earth. When yeah, Jesus yeah, says yeah. that, it doesn't say that he created the heavens and the earth. So that distinguishes. No, 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 listen guys. So listen, let me just wrap up very quick. I'm going to give you a try. So first of all, notice he said something in, in 1 Colossians 15, that the term there is by by him all things were made so i then corrected him and later you can check it out he's got it he accepted it's by means of so when you are the by the means of something you are not the source or you just not from you that everything derives so that's the first point so i educated him on the greek word they're called dia sure did, yeah but you never knew and then afterwards you accepted it's by I, the means I, I of layman. these are subtle my fantastic so my so these are my i mean the champ I uh, the champ is not here yet so when he comes he'll go on another level okay. but let, let me just say to you so just to continue further um, so that Greek word is by, yes you can, I'm just going to finish off now, so, but I just want to summarize very quickly. So the dia, by, so by him means by the means of, by the means not of. by him, so, and it's through him, through meaning him. he's the passive conduit. Gotcha. Like in two, in two feet, Philippians, no, I'm not, because I'm substantiating my point, you so your you audience benefit. Look, no, no, let me finish. Now, now Jesus, can you, right? no, yeah, but, so then I'm going to substantiate further to you're, hammer that point home. No, you're in just two, making no, another I'm point. not. It, what I'm trying to do is to show as my evidence that it's by the means of, like for example, Mustafa, let me I'm Let me finish. You. Then I'm going to keep silent. I'm going to keep silent. In two Philippians verses six to eleven. Point. No, because it's to substantiate you, that so particular point. That you finish, so it says. Wrap up and I sit here quiet, and then you make another point. No, no, because it's to substantiate the point, so you guys You've understand. Done, does finish. everything is everything made by Jesus, or is he by the means of? We'll so with, then, when you we'll look at the Greek, when you look at the yes, we'll so, with so, the but that's a big difference. Uh, it's really that's a huge not. difference. If something is coming, hang on. Let me substantiate the point. When you say from all things, all things come by him. You're then implying that he is the source of Mustafa, creation. But that's now? not the case that he's the by the means of. Can yes, you can, yes. Okay, thank you. So you said that all things is not all things, is that correct? Um, all things meaning that the heavens and the, uh, the new heavens and the Wait, new. It, okay, the, let me ask you. Topic, well, I'm it, you've asked say, me a question, let uh, me yeah, substantiate you it. You just did it? I had never. Does, does, I never. It say, <laughs> does it say that he, by, me, by means of him, all new things were created? Or does it say by means of him? All things were created. Which one? Yes, yeah, so all is not mentioned in the generic sense. Oh, okay. Because sometimes all can be just, for example, in the Old Testament, okay. there's a reference where people are referred to as they all came and did God's work. But there was only a few select Jews who came to do God's work. Okay. So what it says within the context, well, all is not always... One about? second, I'll come there. No, no, you got to substantiate. Yeah, substantiate. I'll, have to bring it, I'll have to bring it up. But I'll remember to the top of my head. No, okay, fair enough. But you can't remember yeah. from every single verse. I remember as much if, as possible. If you're going to bring up something in this conversation, yeah. you got to no, have that's it, fine. Man. But you will be familiar with this understanding I that I, it, I don't know the this. word all does not have to be taken in the literal sense. So can it can let me... Let me... example where all creation doesn't mean all creation. Okay, I'll bring that for you. for. No, excuse me, we're, 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 excuse me, we're, yeah, we're busy. Okay, so just I want, I want to quickly wrap up because this seems to be going around in... Well, is that no, one second, second, one second. With the no, I am dealing with the okay, argument. So it's it now, I've, things, I've, I've corrected things. you. No, I've, no, Mustafa, no, but I've does it say new things or all things? So when it says that he is the new creation, it means in no, terms no, of the, the future... does it say future, new or does it say all, Mustafa? But, yeah, but all, all is irrelevant to this point. All I want to know is if yeah. it says all or does it say all new? Okay, so even if it's... Listen, it's in... Let me explain. Be patient, let me I hear the explanation. Patient. So, in that definition, in 1 Colossians chapter 15, Stop it, one yeah, 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 yeah well, one, okay, 1 Colossians 15, it very, very clearly says that all things were made by the means of him, okay? And through is him. That all things or is that some things? All, all things is, is within the context of the new creation. Wait, that's okay, what it is. Okay, so it's you. all Beautiful. within the new it's creation, the new, the, the, the new the dominions and the um yes, the foundations, yes. So it's not reference to the to the initial creation. Where in Colossians 1 does it mention new creation? It's mentioned within the, within the context. Where? Show me the verse. So it says that, that it makes reference, it will be in reference to the new foundations yeah, yeah, and sure. the new dominions. Okay, good. Okay, okay let's new, have a look new, then. New dominions. Right, hang on, let's have a look at this. Right. Let's silence so this said, argument on for all. He said that the verse in Colossians 1 is in context of new creation. Yeah, that's when he returns. It actually mentions the new creation. It actually mentions new dominions, Which, new principles. Exactly, that's when he comes. You, exactly, that's when he comes. It's not in reference to the creation from the beginning, where God created everything in Mark's book. Okay, got you. Let's see here now. 
Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. When we pull this up, let's see if he's telling the truth. So, Colossians, I am telling the truth. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Verse 15, this is what it says. He is the image of the invisible God, Amen. the firstborn of all creation. Amen. Maybe that's all new creation, right? Not all creation. He's the first one of all new creation? Yes. Okay, so not all creation. Not, not from the, because in Mark's gospel, he said God created the heavens and the, the earth. Jesus did, Jesus did, but in Mark's gospel, gotcha. it says that God wait, created wait, the heavens don't, and the don't, earth. Don't he didn't say down. I created the heavens don't create, and the earth. Don't, don't, don't. Well, the Father says that Jesus created the, new, the heavens and the earth. So it looks like the Father. No, he didn't say that. In Mark's well, yeah, gospel. Hold on, I, let me see. In Hebrews 1, the Father says that Jesus is the Lord who created all things by his hands. Where does it say that in Hebrews in 1? Hebrews 1 chapter. Show me it. Show me it. Uh, 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 oh, man. Show I, me I'm it. quoting it. Okay. Hebrews chapter 1, yes. verses 10. Okay. Look, look, I got you. I got you. Excellent. One, I'm very 10. familiar with this. Good. This is going to be, this is going to be a dagger this to you. Says, this is what the Father says to the Son. You, Lord, laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Wow. Okay. But didn't Jesus say in Mark that the that the Father is the Lord who created the heavens and the earth? So, that, so it looks like, it's like both the Father and the Son glorify each other as the source of all creation. No, they don't. That's they call called biblical literacy. Hmm. That's how you know how to read. Right. You must so, read. You must. Re what? Let me finish this. Cause I don't want us to get away from it. You know what I'm saying? So look, Hebrews one. He said it mentions new creation. Let's see. That's in Colossians one. Colossians one. Yeah. Yeah. Don't say Hebrews one. I didn't say that. Well, you did. I said that I misspoke. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, so he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, or with him, by means of him, all things were created. Not all new things, all things were created. Now, it gives us in detail, because he said it doesn't create the, the heaven and the earth. Let's see what he created. What, what, what are all things um, that are in heaven? Wait, you're not supposed to say that, Paul. You're supposed to say the new heaven, Paul. Created all things that are in heaven. And he didn't say, he said not the new earth. He said not earth. And that are on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones, opinions, principalities, or powers. Watch this. All things were created through him and for him. Yes. So They're here. Well, okay, hold on. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together without him creation falls apart that's in jesus right. so how is he not where, where, where does he mention new creation here i, I need to see where it so it refers to creation it refers to principalities and dominions does it mention this new is principalities? yes it does because where? within hang on within the context this is referencing but that, that he's the first born from creation that that one minute let me finish the point so by necessity god is not first born does that make sense he to you? is god he is. God is firstborn. Yes, he is. Mike, hey, no, no, Almighty do, do you God. Know what that means? Hang on, one minute. Almighty yeah. God, who is immortal, yeah. who has got no beginning, He's no end. Born. Hang on, who has got no beginning, yeah. no end. Uh -huh. Yet you are saying Jesus is the firstborn. Yeah, absolutely. You, and I'm gonna show you your ignorance here. The reason why you're surprised by that is because you don't know the Bible. I know for the example, Bible pretty well. Yeah. For okay, you know the Bible. Okay. That's so, why you want to debate okay, me. Good, okay, Otherwise, good. you don't want to debate okay, anyone good. else. How many, how many brothers did David have? I don't know how many brothers David oh, had. That's not. That's not consequential. To no, no, this no, conversation, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how it's consequential. That's not consequential. Okay. Was David the oldest, middle, or youngest? I don't know. You don't know. I'm gonna help you. That's irrelevant okay. to the point. There was eight of them. I'm gonna tell you. That's, how, okay, I'm gonna go show on. You how. All right, go on. There was eight of them. There was eight of them. David was the youngest. Now, in Psalm 89, verse 27, God says about David, "You are my firstborn." Huh? Wait, hold on a second. David's the youngest. So how is it that David could be the firstborn? Mustafa. Precisely. Good point. That's the, that shows that the Bible is a bundle of contradictions. In Exodus, in Exodus chapter four, verse twenty-two, Israel or Jacob is referred to as the firstborn. Okay. So what this is, what this is within the context that they are all over the place in terms of is, is Jacob the firstborn or is it David is the firstborn? Make your mind up. Or is it Jesus is the firstborn? It's easy. Look, Mustafa, if you knew the Bible. You wouldn't, need, you wouldn't even be making this mistake. This I, is going to be I know the Bible. It's not embarrassing. Okay. Okay, You're the one who's being embarrassed by the I, means I of. You accepted. So, so this, so this You're the one. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> so this is what it means. Firstborn is a title of preeminence. Supremacy. So yes, God is firstborn because he's supreme over all creation. Duh. So when Jesus is called the firstborn of all creation, he's the supreme one of all creation. It just makes That's him adding into it. You know what I'm 
understanding. That's him adding his understanding, his premeditated understanding okay. into it. So By definition, according to James D. G. Don, don't argue with me, the top New Testament it, scholars, he say he, he, say he's making reference that it's in terms of the new creation, the new principalities, the new foundations. It's when he returns. Hence, hence it says he's the firstborn, you see, from the dead. Doesn't it say, let me explain to you. When they say he's the firstborn from the dead, what does that tell you? That means that on, on his return, when he has... Yeah, within the context he's telling you. Where? Because you know why? Because he's telling you the new, pr the principalities, the he foundations. Why you keep no, but no, it? but it's because. Look, I'm uh, gonna give you my phone. Okay, so when you're okay, so when you're when you're first no, no, born. No, no, okay, no, here, no, here. Let, sorry, don't worry, don't worry about the melodrama. If when you're talking about the fir the term firstborn, by necessity, and it's understood to be in, in Revelation, he's referred to be the firstborn from the dead. I think I was reading it yesterday in Revelation chapter, uh, 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 chapter, yes. So when you're firstborn from the dead, so what does this mean then? That means, hang on, no, whoa, whoa, no, 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 let me speak now, okay? So when you're the firstborn from the dead, that necessitates on his return. So it's substantial, listen to me. It substantiates my point. So when you're the firstborn from the dead, that means when you have been, you've come back, when he will come back. So that's when he will be ruling. That's when he will be ruling according to the new uh, the dominions. The yeah, I've, I've got, I don't know why you should okay. be self-explanatory. Within the context, uh, one Where? second, within the context in Revelation chapter one and in Revelation chapter five, it makes mention that he's the firstborn from the dead. Okay, let me, let me finish. Let me finish, please. So I can't this, see the word new here, bro. But, but it's in ref, the context determines that. The Where? context is determining it Show from me. the passage because, listen, I'm not, this is just going around in circles. Listen, when you are, when you are, dead when you are when you have died when you're the first born from the dead what which jesus is according to christians you will believe that don't you yes. right? He's, right, yeah. excellent so by definition if he's the first born from the dead in this particular context it's referring to the new dominions the new Where? hang on let me the new dominions the new um uh, principalities what are those principalities so when he comes and rules upon um, uh, upon mankind and judges according to what god has revealed to him so it's in that context it's making reference to and why am i saying that which you began in too many circles is that when this is the, the definition in revelation is that he's the first born from the dead he then comes and then he's then he has that new creation that, that, who is that new creation? Those who will follow him. Those who he will have the principalities and the dominions that he will rule upon. Because we know Jesus did not rule at the time that he was there. He only ruled at this to, when he returns. So within the context of this, and this is not me saying it, James D.G. Dunn, one of the greatest New Testament scholars of the 20th century. Okay, I would like to see that quote from J.D. Dunn that says exactly what you said. Okay. So this is what we get, well, I, I guess we can end it because you said it's going in circles. I'll say my point, you just said yours. Yeah, good point. Um, Guys, uh, you, you guys can see what, what, uh, what happens to you when you don't read the Bible. Um, you see what happens to you when you can't read context. And you see what happens to you when you're, you, you know, you get a little too ahead of yourself and you start saying things that doesn't end up in the Bible. This is why you get embarrassed on camera when you say things that you can't prove. You just can't prove it. Don't say, hey, oh, it's talking about, oh, it's new creation. You, no, notice how, first of all, guys, I wasn't even the one that brought this up. He came here. He had the nerve to come to Colossians 1 to try to prove that Jesus wasn't God when it calls him creator. It doesn't call him creator. Earth. It doesn't call him creator. Oh, now, oh, oh my God. It's not, He's it's all, over. not all of creation. It's talking about the ages. What does ages mean, Mustafa? Times. Oh, so Jesus created the times? He, so all of time came into existence through Jesus? So even just say for example... Hey, did I interrupt your okay. summary? In this mark, let I, me haven't, cook, I haven't man. summarized yet. Let me cook. Let me cook. So he came here and it shows, brother, how you butchered your position by coming to a, to a verse that shows that Jesus is divine, Jesus is creator, and Jesus is su supreme over all of creation. There isn't even a question about it in this verse. You got yourself in trouble. Oh, yeah, uh, now, how did we get here though? We got here because he wanted to run away from how Jesus distinguishes himself from the prophets. He tried to say that son of God is just a general term. That anybody is a son of God, which in, a, in some sense, he actually does have a case. That son of God, there's many senses that you can be sons of God. Angels are sons of God. Adam was a son of God. Prophets are sons of God. Kings of Israel are sons of God. Israel the nation are sons of God. Sons by the tongues. 
But there's something that Jesus says. He says that God sent his son into the world, his only son, his only son, that you should, that the world should be saved through him. Wait a second. Why does Jesus say he's the unique son, the only son, when he has many? Why does Jesus make a distinction, which he didn't answer, by the way, in Mark 12, where Jesus says that God sent his prophets. They killed his prophets. They murdered his prophets. They disrespected his prophets. Then the owner says, you know what? There's one more. I'm going to send my son. Wait, Jesus, we're all sons. You're just a prophet like them. You're all sons. Why is it that you're making this distinction? Because there is a, a true distinction that Jesus is the son of God in the sense that he shares the same divine essence as God. He is the Son of the Father, eternally begotten from the Father's essence, full of grace and truth, which is why there's none like him, which is why he's the unique Son of God who came into the world. He's different from the rest. There ain't nobody like him. Not Moses, not Abraham, not Muhammad. It's only Jesus. That's how we got here. So, Are you finished? Well, let me finish up. Let me just finish. You did. No, I have. I didn't make a summary. This, did. That's a conclusive summary. Let me make a summary as well. Okay. So notice everybody. What did we establish over here? When he cited one Colossians fifteen. Stop saying he, one Colossians. Yeah. Okay. All right. Doesn't make a difference. Let, okay. Just right, one Colossians fifteen. What did he say? He said that everything was made by Jesus and for Jesus and through Jesus. So I then said to him, and he admitted afterwards, it's all been recorded. I said, the Greek word there is dia, which means by the means of. It's a big distinction, but it's not, he is the, he is the source. So then he afterwards, what did he say? He said, yeah, by the means of. He didn't say no, by him. It's a big difference if you're doing something through someone, or if you're doing something by yourself, that you can then make that claim. So he exceeded that point without even realizing, and we're very fortunate that with that, so one minute, and we're very fortunate, this has been recorded for everybody's attention, for the genuine people. Second point, when we went through 1 Colossians 15, which I brought up initially to substantiate a particular point, it was to show that when Jesus returns, because it says he will be the first born from the dead, and I've cited Revelation, which he accepted. He accepted in Revelation, he's referred to as the first born from the dead. So it's in this context that when he returns, and he will be um, the ruler over the principalities and the foundations and the this new earth which will be presented to him. What is this new earth? This new earth is when he returns. It's not because in Mark's gospel he says that um, uh, in Mark, I think it's Mark chapter three when he says that um, God created the heavens and the earth. He didn't say and I created the heavens and the earth. So that distinguishes between the two. And the, la and the other point that he made, and I'll wrap it up very quickly, the term son of God. Now he's making a, um, a pre-assumption that the term son of God necessitates that Christ is a distinct and unique son of God in a way which is not the case as you would find in the normal context of things. I cited Luke 3.38 where Adam too is referred to as the son of God. In, in, in Exodus chapter 4 verse 22, Jacob is also referred to as the son of God. So the son of God is defined in Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they too will be known as the sons of God. So the term sons of God is a ubiquitous title for those who represent God. Then he cited the term son of God in John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so ever loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay, let's deal with that. The term there is used is genes, which is unique. And we know Jesus came as a, hang on. No, it's not monogamous. It's not in there. No, it's like, let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. So, in the, so can I, yeah, I haven't finished my summary, guys. Come on. So, because I kept quiet while she was speaking. So, anyway, so the point now we, we got to understand is yes, he's unique in the sense that he was born of, um, uh, of a virgin birth. But it doesn't necessitate that he's unique in terms of being a son of God, being a literal son of God. Because I've given you the definition. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they too will be called the sons of God. So whoever does God's work is referred to as the son of God. And my very last point, going back to Mark 10, 17, which is where the conversation started initially. So when a young man, if for example, if all of us are over here. If I was to say Avery is the only person from the United States, that by default would exclude us. So when Jesus says in Mark 10, 17, why do you call me good? There's no one good except for God alone. He's excluding that title to himself by just English grammar. Look, he's, he's def it's a deference of title to God alone. And to substantiate the point, 30 seconds on land my plane, in which um, he says in, in verse 20, the young man then says to him, teacher, I've kept these commandments since I was a boy. What does this mean? That means to show that he's understood. Whoa, Jesus told me off for calling him good teacher. 
So in verse 20, when I redress Jesus, I simply call him teacher. Hence, he has understood that this is a title exclusively for God alone. Wrapped up beautifully and 10 seconds, John 17, free. For this is eternal life, Jesus' formula, that they may know you as the only true God Ooh. and whom you have sent, the, apost the, the apostelios, Jesus the Christ. Go to the biblehub.net, John chapter 17, verse three. Is that, is that he's referred to as a messenger sent by God. Is that the John, Father? God is the only true God. And he, Father? yes. Sorry, and he, is, so he, so he, and anyway, we can do, I know you, you like to speak about the term Father. Well, it's just sorry. So I don't want to check so far. So okay guys, so no problem. So we finished we finished the conversation over here. We've had a thoroughly we've had a thoroughly enjoyable conversation. So I hope everybody has understood among yes. Yeah, so amongst all of the um, discussions that we've had, I hope this has been very informative for the people in, in, in the context of how um, conversations develop. There's a lot of background noise. I think he got done big time, in my personal opinion. Watch it. In 1 Colossians 15, the term dia is used. It simply means by the means of. He's the conduit from God makes everything. And these were the titles that the Unitarians Christians make. In addition to this, this is one up for the biblical Unitarians here. One up for the biblical Unitarians over here. What do we observe over here? We observe the following that if you go to a Unitarian site called biblicalunitarianism.com, you get all your answers in crushing the notion that Jesus is God, according to Unitarian Christians. So, Alhamdulillah, I think he got done. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.